To successfully establish human life on Mars, the development of advanced rockets and spacecraft is crucial. Our team believes we've made significant progress in creating the next generation of such technology, making the prospect of moving to Mars more achievable. Elon Musk's vision of colonizing Mars, however, faces skepticism from Professor Brian Cox, who questions the feasibility of such grand ambitions. Join us on our cosmic journey, Brian Cox believes Elon Musk is wrong, and we can't colonize Mars. Mars, often viewed as a potential new Earth, presents challenges that demand a closer examination. Is it truly possible for humans to survive on its barren surface with our current technology? The prospect of creating a self-sustaining base on Mars gains significance when considering potential global challenges like a third, world war. Elon Musk SpaceX is actively working on the first interplanetary ship, with short test flights expected in the coming year. The idea is not just an escape plan for the wealthy, but a necessity to ensure the survival and regeneration of human civilization in the face of potential catastrophic events. However, the rosy picture of establishing permanent colonies on Mars painted by Musk is met with skepticism. Mars poses numerous challenges, it is a frigid, barren planet with an atmosphere much thinner than Earth's, making it inhospitable to human life. The harsh conditions include extreme temperatures, thin air, and low gravity, all of which could have severe consequences for human health. Despite Musk's ambitious timeline for Martian colonies by the 2050s, Experts like astrobiologist Louis Donnell suggest a more realistic estimate of 50 to 100 years. The idea of large-scale colonies with hundreds of thousands of inhabitants, as proposed by the United Arab Emirates, remains firmly in the realm of science fiction. Drawing parallels with past ambitious visions that never materialized, skeptics argue that the challenges of living on Mars are currently underestimated. The development of necessary infrastructure, sustainable food and water supply, and addressing health risks associated with the Martian environment are significant hurdles that need to be overcome. While NASA and other space agencies are actively working on countermeasures to address the negative impacts of living on Mars, the idea of mass migration from Earth remains questionable. Cosmologist Martin Rees warns against viewing space as a complete escape from Earth's problems emphasizing that dealing with challenges like climate change on Earth is a more manageable task than attempting to terraform Mars. In conclusion, while the dream of colonizing Mars is captivating, the harsh realities of the planet's inhospitable environment, and the significant technological and logistical challenges involved suggest that full-scale colonization is unlikely in the foreseeable future. When we talk about making Mars habitable for humans, the process known as terraforming often comes up, Simply put, terraforming means transforming the planet to make it more Earth-like. But, let's be honest, terraforming Mars is not a quick task, it's a job that might take centuries. Mars is a huge planet, about half the size of Earth, and the trick is not to bring expensive equipment from Earth. Instead, scientists propose using Mars's own features. Underneath Mars's surface, there's a lot of carbon dioxide. By heating up the planet a bit, we can release this carbon dioxide and kickstart a greenhouse effect. This, in turn, melts more ice, releasing more carbon dioxide. It's like a chain reaction that we only need to jumpstart once. Now, the challenge is how to jumpstart it. Some ideas include using hydrogen bombs or nuclear power plants to raise Mars's temperature. The goal is to leverage the carbon dioxide that already exists on Mars, rather than bringing equipment from Earth. Terraforming involves injecting oxygen and other gases into Mars's atmosphere, among other interventions. While some think colonizing Mars could help kickstart the terraforming process, experts emphasize that this is a task spanning thousands of years due to its complexity. Without terraforming, Mars remains a tough environment for pioneers. One major issue is the intense radiation, posing a constant health threat. Even if we live underground or in shielded bases, long-term exposure is expected to significantly increase cancer rates. Creating artificial habitats, like domes or underground dwellings, might help with radiation. But this kind of living comes with challenges, depression, boredom, vision impairment, and high blood pressure. It also lacks the diverse microbial ecosystems necessary for a healthy human microbiome. Moreover, the idea of establishing colonies on Mars raises questions about the quality of life. 
Enclosed living in artificially lit bases limits outdoor access, leading to potential health problems. Motivation for people to willingly live in such an inhospitable place is also in doubt. When it comes to reproduction on Mars, many uncertainties arise. Radiation's impact on fetal development and the challenges of conception in low gravity make procreation on Mars highly uncertain. Scientists lack a clear understanding of how sperm and eggs behave in the Martian environment. Returning to Earth after long-duration stays in space also poses challenges for astronauts. Microgravity exposures long-term effects, especially beyond a year, remain concerning. This brings up questions about the potential difficulties Martian colonists might face upon returning to Earth. Surviving day-to-day -day on Mars is another big challenge. Limited access to essential resources like food and water could restrict the colony's growth. Locating water and suitable areas for agriculture poses significant challenges, considering the toxic nature of Mars's soil and its harsh conditions. In summary, while the idea of making Mars habitable is fascinating, the practical challenges and uncertainties involved make large, thriving colonies on the planet unlikely in the near future. When it comes to settling on Mars, some challenges arise that might require unique solutions. Colonists could find themselves building underground hydroponic greenhouses. This means growing plants without soil, using specialized lighting and genetically modified plants that can thrive in Mars's environment. However, getting water on Mars poses its own set of problems. Now, Elon Musk envisions a million people living on Mars by 2050, but not everyone shares the same optimism. Professor Brian Cox, a respected physicist, is a bit skeptical. He thinks landing on Mars might take at least 20 years due to the lack of necessary technology. While he believes a small research base might happen, building a whole civilization on Mars seems improbable anytime soon. Living on Mars has its share of challenges, as Professor Cox points out. Mars is much farther away than the moon, and the journey there takes about seven to nine months. Astronauts would face more than 30 times the annual radiation limit during this trip, increasing the risk of cancer. There's even a concern called space brain, where constant exposure to cosmic rays might cause long-term brain damage. The space environment also messes with bacteria, which is crucial for human health. Microgravity can make humans more prone to infections, and bacteria could become more resistant to antibiotics. So, colonizing Mars requires overcoming challenges beyond just setting up structures and growing food. Scientists are working on solutions, like a device to extract water from Mars's atmosphere and a reverse fuel cell to get oxygen. But life on Mars won't be as comfortable as on Earth. The thin atmosphere lacks oxygen, making natural breathing impossible. Even if we develop solutions, they'll likely be less comfortable than what we're used to. Surviving on Mars also means dealing with weightlessness, toxic soil, limited food and water, and extreme temperatures. To overcome these, scientists propose building habitable structures or bubbles that recreate a suitable atmosphere and protect against radiation. These structures must have everything a home needs, including air and water recycling systems, rest areas, and kitchens. While water on Mars is scarce and mainly frozen, certain areas show promise. Finding water could also give clues about past or present life on Mars. But living on Mars is not for the faint-hearted. Brave individuals willing to face these challenges will shape the post-human future exploring new frontiers and potentially transforming the destiny of humanity. This concept of a post-human future might involve extensive biological and cybernetic changes in humans. In the distant future, there's a wild idea that humans might undergo some pretty extreme changes. Imagine, people could make modifications to themselves so radical that they're not just your regular homo sapiens anymore. Why? Well, it's all about getting ready for life on Mars. Now, this isn't about regular folks. It's for those who are willing to tweak their own biology and even their future kids to adapt to the Martian way of life. This futuristic adaptation plan involves a mix of playing with our genes and throwing in some high-tech gadgets. The goal is to create a new kind of human that can live, work, and have babies on Mars without breaking a sweat. These changes could go so far that we might end up with a whole new species, one designed specifically for life beyond Earth.
Picture this, scientists might tweak our DNA to ensure we stay healthy and live longer on Mars. They could soup up our muscles, bones, and brains, passing these enhancements down to the next generations of Martian pioneers. It's like upgrading ourselves for the red planet. But wait, there's more. If biology alone isn't cutting it, scientists might dive into the world of cyborgs. That means throwing in some artificial neurons, synthetic skin to shield against those harsh UV rays, and even nanotechnology, tiny machines that could replace our traditional ways of doing things like breathing and eating. It's like turning us into a whole new kind of human, tailor-made for surviving on Mars. Now, don't get too excited just yet. This whole space human upgrade thing is not a walk in the park. In fact, it's not even guaranteed to happen. There's a chance that we might be stuck right here on Earth, never quite figuring out how to hop over to other planets. And that's a bit of a bummer. If we can't make it to Mars, it raises some big questions. Are we destined to be a one-planet species, just stuck here on Earth? It's not just about us, it's also about what might happen to other intelligent life out there. Failing to spread ourselves across the universe sounds pretty gloomy. Even though it seems like a huge challenge, Elon Musk and his SpaceX team are dead set on proving everyone wrong. They're working on a super cool rocket called the Starship, with plans to send people to Mars. But, let's be real, it's still early days, and there's a bunch of tech puzzles to solve before we see the first human footsteps on the red planet. What do you think? Is Elon Musk onto something big, or is Mars just too much for us humans?